Hi everybody, this is Carissa from thesmashbook.com and I am just going to um, bring you guys a little something different today for um, the weekly recap. If you follow my blog, um, you will know that usually on Mondays I post um, a bunch of pictures and everything from the weekend before because um, I don't usually post on Saturday and Sunday. This weekend I decided I would film a little bit of um, art journal stuff and get you guys um, up to speed with what's going on. Okay, so I'm all aproned up. We're going to get working. Um, this page is sort of in the middle. Um, for background, you guys can see <laughs> all this loveliness. Um, I usually cover my background with red rosin paper. Right now I'm actually working, I'm privileged to work on an antique desk, and I don't want any of my gesso or paint or anything to get onto my background, so or onto my desk. So um, I actually use this red rosin paper. It's made... Um, for roofers, actually. They put it down because it's a waterproof layer. Um, you can get it at a hardware store. If you guys have questions, just comment below or visit the blog, and I have tons of information about how to get it. <clears throat> it's relatively inexpensive. I think I got a roll of, it of like, 500 feet for, like, 12 bucks. Um, so if you, if you have questions, just ask. Um, we're going to get started. Let me grab my clips. I usually use um, just binder clips, like... These ones from the store, um, or you can use, um, like they do have jaw clips at the paint stores and stuff, but I figure I have these laying around, I might as well. Um, <clears throat> so to get started, I'm going to gesso this, just because these have, the pages have lines on them, and unless I'm going to do something that is very linear, I don't really want lines on it. Um, so there's a couple of different kinds of gesso that I'm working with. I have, this one is my favorite from Miningers. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yes, you can. Um, and it's, Miningers is a local brand from here in Denver, and I really, really like this brand of gesso. Um, it has pretty good brush stroke retention, so if I'm going to brush it on, I'm going to use that. Um, I also have this that I got actually at Walmart. Um, I mean, this is super um, liquidy gesso. And then I also have um, Claudine Helmuth. If you guys follow her, she's pretty big in the art journaling field. Um, she has the Studio C, or Studio Gesso, Claudine Helmuth Studio. And this is actually pretty expensive. I think I got this whole big tub of gesso, which is 33.8 fluid ounces, for like 6 bucks. And this one, which is made by Ranger, it's 4 fluid ounces, and hers was 7 bucks. So, I mean, you can see it fits in my hands, just to give you guys perspective. Um, it's very, very tiny compared to this one. <laughs> it's very little. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's tons of different price ranges if you guys are looking for cost-effective gesso. For this one, I'm actually doing something a little bit different. Um, I was watching a Donna Downey video. For those of you guys that don't know her, she's big in the art journaling field. You can check her out on YouTube. And um, she actually included some glass pearls. Um, some glass gel medium, I think is what she called, or glass, glass bead medium, I think is what she called it, um, in her page to do a background. So that's what I'm going to do, except I'm going to make my own. She was using Golden, which is pretty expensive. Um, I'm going to make my own. So I'm using this little tub of gesso that I've already obviously been into. And you can see it. This gesso is kind of the consistency of, um, like with cream almost. You can see it's kind of, it'll, it'll keep its retention. It's pretty, you know, it's not very liquidy. So, um, that's a good thing. And then I'm using these Martha Stewart Crafts Luster Micro Beads. Let's see if you guys can, if I can focus this so you guys can see it. Maybe. There you go. Glass Micro Beads. Um, and these ones are brownstone. So I'm using these. Um, you can get these at any craft store. I think I got these at Joanne. Um, but, you can get them anywhere. They just have a little dial top. So I'm actually going to make my own um, glass bead gesso. And I'm just going to, since there's not a lot of gesso in here, I'm just going to pour this in here. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Almost looks like coffee grounds. <laughs> Can you hear that? So what that's going to do, I'm not really so worried about the page and about what it's going to, um, what it, what the color of the beads are. I'm more just doing it for um, a texturing effect. So I'm going to get this shaken up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I shook this up pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, so you can see it looks like stucco. I hope you guys can see that texture in there. So even though I use brown beads, you can't really see that they're brown. Um, you know, they look sort of dark if you catch them in the light, but you can't see that they're brown. And I really wanted a um, pretty good, thick, 
kind of stucco-y look to this because it is such a small thing of gesso. I'm just going to keep it like this. And that way if I want to have more um, stucco medium, I can just use it out of this box or out of this, you know, tub. Okay, so um, I'm standing up, so I'm going to sit down. I'm going to grab one of my paint cards. For those of you guys that don't have palette knives, I've never been a big fan of a palette knife. If you really want to go get one, you can use a butter knife. I don't really ever do that. As you can see, I use my um, cards quite a bit. So I'm going to actually sit down part of my squeaky chair and get to work on prepping this page. Get rid of these lines and add some really awesome texture. So I'm sure you guys can hear this awesome kind of like crummy cruddy sound um, it's gonna give your pages a really really cool background and it's really fun to see when this dries um, now keep in mind because these aren't clear glass beads they're not going to be transparent um, so you don't really have to worry so much about them showing through a watercolor or a tempera paint that's um, translucent um, what you need what you're going to want to focus on is more just the texture so I'm gonna actually like plop this down because I can't fit my card in there to scoop it out. And this is going to take a little bit of time to dry. Um, because it is texture in gesso and not in gel medium like the glass bead medium is, um, you're not going to have to worry about it drying or curing the right way and having a bubble. It's just gesso. So you can take a heat gun to this. You can take um, a hair dryer to this. You can leave it air dry. You can do it whatever you want. I'm actually going to take this in my bathroom and let it dry under the um, hair dryer because why have a heat gun when you can have a hair dryer? That's what I say. So my hair dryer is covered in gesso fingerprints. If you were at my house, you would know that that's true. Um, I'm just kind of prepping this, not really worrying about getting it totally perfect against the seams because the paint and the ink that we're going to be using is going to seep into the actual page, the pe the pieces that are left without the gesso um, a lot more and in a different way than it's going to be on the ones that have the gesso on the spaces. So um, I'm just kind of, I don't really want this to look too uniform. I want it to look pretty uneven and not like it's a, just one coat. I have a clump in my gesso, so let's get that bad boy out of there. And I'm just going to kind of go through and just kind of make some little lines and nothing too formal just kind of break it up so it doesn't really look like a single coat I want it to look like like this is stucco like we layered it on awesome and then I usually just kind of clean off my um my card after I'm done I'll move this and pick it up so I can go take care of this and while I let that dry I'm going to I usually scrape off my cards get this really thin so it will dry, and then um, I'm going to go dry this, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I have let this dry, and it was under the, um, the hair dryer, so it is warm to the touch. It actually feels kind of nice. You guys can see um, how the glass beads kind of paired up, if you will. They're in little sections. So like this section right here is just gesso. This section right here is glass beads so cool. So that's going to give a really nice, really rough, fun texture <clears throat> when we go ahead and um, put our other layers on. So um, make sure my one recommendation, make sure that this is like actually dry. Like don't, if it's tacky at all, don't, this is from earlier. If it's tacky at all, don't, um, don't paint on it because you're just going to get those beads to lift up and then you're going to ruin your texture. So make sure that this is dry when you actually do it. <clears throat> okay, let's grab our paints, and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so grabbing your paints, um, I need to think about what colors I'm going to do for this. I actually left this gesso open, so let's close that. Um, with a gessoed background, you can pretty much layer anything on it. Um, keep in mind that like watercolors aren't going... Gesso is, is not as porous as like just a normal piece of paper, so watercolor is going to have a hard time sticking. You can still ink on it, you can still paint on it, you can do things like that, but keep in mind that if you wanted to watercolor, um, it's hard to do that on something like this. <clears throat> Unless you're using a specialized watercolor. So, what I'm actually going to do, 
cups. I have these nifty little cups. Um, they're silicone. They, I got them at um, the container store. They have this really super cute like floral print on them. Um, and then out of my jar of water, that's kind of gross, but I just use it as a wash. This is just gesso and water <clears throat> from earlier today. Um, I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm going to um, finger paint, I think, on this. And I'm going to... Um, water it down. I usually will finger paint and then I'll water it down with a little bit of water. So, <clears throat> let's look at our paints. I think I'm going to start, <clears throat> it's spring, so let's start with some yellow. Let's see here. Because I have my protected work surface, I usually just plop paint right onto it because it's waterproof, it's not going to go through it and it's easy for me to just pick it up on my finger. So let's, let's see if we can get a little <clears throat> messy in here. So let's get that. And then, you know, like here, when there's no gesso, that is going to be really, really smooth. It's going to take the paint really, really well. So just keep that in mind when you're working. As always, this is just playtime and a suggestion. It feels really cool on your finger too. I feel like I'm exfoliating my fingertip. <laughs> Rub my face on it. That would probably be good. Okay. So there's our yellow. And I'm liking that. I'm thinking that we need a punch of a color. So I either want to do, <clears throat> I, my first thought is green. My second thought is blue. So let's combine them. I'm going to combine a darkish blue for an artist, I should have a lot better color description, don't you think? And kind of a spearmint green. This one is actually called spearmint. Okay. I need to go get more paint. I'm running out. As evidenced by me. Dang that. You guys, if you follow my blog, you know my affection for teal, though. This is not something new. Oh, that's a really nice color. Okay, so... Going to get a little bit of water. We're going to rub this in here. Oh, this is going to look awesome. Happy place. And so this too, I'm kind of, I blended it most of the way, but not all the way, meaning the green and the blue. Um, so that way you still get a little bit of color variance. It's not totally green, it's not totally blue, and it's not all one uniform color. So that's really fun because it just adds extra dimension to your page, which is, I think, amazing. How can that be bad, right? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit more of my green blue concoction. If I have more green paint, there we go. And then, well, I'm actually going to make the same green, and I'm going to do a darker blue in this one instead of the one that we used before. Um, see what this gets us. This one hasn't been used in a while. I'm not a big dark color fan, which I'm trying to, like, broaden my horizons and kind of get that going, but we'll see. Ooh, that looks really nice. Look at that. So this is really going to kind of ground the page and give it, you always want to have, um, a range of colors and a range of hues. And, um, even if they're same, like, you know, shade family, like a maroon and a brick red and a bright red, like a poppy red, um, you can always do that, or you can have them in the same family, like mine are green, yellow, blue. Um, and the darkest one you want to use the most sparingly in a page like this because you want it to anchor and ground the page, but not make the whole page dark and, and kind of ominous. So I'm kind of putting this on sparingly. Let's move this here. And get this in here. I'm going to actually wet this down a little bit just so it kind of blends a little bit better. You can see as I wet that down, it just kind of sinks in a little bit more. Okay. So that's what we're looking at right now. Let's let this dry and come back in a minute. Okay, so we let our tempera paint dry, um, or acrylic paint, to give you guys a little bit of a visual. This is what it looks like. So <clears throat> with our gesso that we made, it looks almost like coral. Um, and you can see, like, right here, the parts that didn't take the paint. 
um, are the parts that are not raised. So the bottommost parts aren't going to take the paint, which makes it kind of cool because then you have this really abstract pattern that um, you can't replicate, which is awesome. So um, I'm going to take these clips off since we're done on the side, and um, I'm going to grab my India ink. I have a couple, well, I have a, way too many different kinds, but I'm going to grab um, the black. I just used the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay inks. Um, you can get them any craft store. So I use the black one, and I'm going to use the grass green and the golden yellow to kind of continue the theme with our page. And then I also have um, the aqua, which try not to confuse that with the turquoise. You can see that they're a lot different. Um, the turquoise is more blue. The aqua is actually what most people consider a turquoise. So keep that in mind. If that's unclear, um, ask questions below or on the blog and I can answer them for you. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to see a little bit. Um, what I'm actually going to do is kind of outline the page um, in some ink and let's see if we should do that with a stamp pad or if we should do that with ink, with liquid ink. Let's do it with a um, let's see, let's do that with India ink, with liquid ink. So I'm going to take my black India ink and just kind of draw an abstract outline on the outside. Make sure you don't have your dropper all the way full, otherwise you get puddles. And I'm just kind of going around the sides here, squeezing a little bit as you go so that you get a nice ink flow and you don't have these lines like I just did. <laughs> And then um, the more that your ink runs out of your dropper, the thinner, the thinner the line you'll have. Just keep that in mind. And as with everything, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's more just to kind of outline and ground your page, just like we did with the black. You want each new page or each new spread to be a new canvas and not have to answer to the one before it. Otherwise, you'd have a journal that looks all the same. Who wants that? Okay. So, if you guys have never used any ink, it dries really fast. Um, probably in the time that I'm done in the next five sentences, it will have dried. So, I don't usually worry about waiting for this to dry, but um, if you guys want to, more than welcome. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm taking the Aqua India ink, which is really looks like a turquoise, but it's called Aqua. And I'm going to dribble, um, kind of splatter really, this ink on here. So, I'm going to fill up my dropper all the way. And then hold it from a distance and kind of shake it and squeeze at the same time. So you're going to get what looks like if you're really, really messily painting a room. That looks awesome. And you can already see that those are dry. So they're just going to give you a little bit of a splatter. Now, with something like this, um, you don't want this to be too grounding, just like we did with our dark blue paint. So I'm going to kind of liven this up. I'm going to do the same thing with the golden yellow and splatter. You guys can see that. Oh my gosh, this looks awesome. And then I'm going to do the same thing again with the grass green. And so while this is drying, um, while the yellow is drying, we're going to spray on the green. You'll notice too, if you get to the end and you get these bubbles, I usually just empty my dropper and then kind of do a reverse. So I just kind of suction it back in and it should get rid of your bubbles. Not that that's a big deal, but if you don't like it or if they make your ink spread and you're not a fan of that, um, easy fix. Awesome. This looks so good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is dabble off the extra ink, which you don't have to do, but I'm a process person, so I like doing that. Um, I have this really old piece of tissue that I've obviously used to do this like 5,000 times. So I just roll it up into a ball and kind of dab, and you'll see that it takes some of the ink off and it actually even took some of the um, under off which is pretty cool because it makes like this corally tealy kind of textury color which is so awesome this is turning out so great and this is why it's important to let every layer dry and when you're doing such a textured page because if you don't let them dry in between when you do this you're going to be taking off your texture so make sure that everything is dry before you do your ink and before you start blotting or you're going to take off your beads and that would be really bad okay so here's what we have so far you guys can see that um very very textury very fun um i'm going to take a couple minutes and let this dry and then um we will be back 
Okay, so we let our ink dry and everything is all blotted and dried and taken care of. Um, now, I'm pretty happy with the way that this is turning out, so I don't think I'm going to add anything else. It tends to be that way when you start to add and add and add and add and add, things get crazy and then I end up not liking it. So I'm going to get rid of the water that we took out of our bowl. When you're using a silicone, you can just pour it right back and nothing's going to stick, so these are super easy to wash. Um, if you have <clears throat> questions about where I got those, you can comment or ask on the blog or send me an email or a tweet or something. Um, instead of, I was going to actually do um, a stencil, but instead of doing that, I think I'm going to use stickers <clears throat> and my um, embossing tape. So, because I started this on the premise of spring and spring colors, let's start with these stickers. Where do I want to put this? Spring. Where do we put spring? Let's put the spring right here. <clears throat> SP. I'm a big fan of using um, capital letters and lowercase letters together. Um, not only does it let you use up a bunch of stickers, so if you only have, if you don't have enough lowercase for a word and you don't have enough uppercase for a word, <clears throat> just combine them. It's cute and easy and everyone's going to love it anyway. Like, in this instance, let me see. So, the S is lowercase, the P is lowercase, the R, the I are capitals, the N is lowercase, and then just for kicks, we're going to do an uppercase G. Just so it's different enough when there's no pattern. If I can get it off the thing, geez. <clears throat> okay, so, that's what we have right now. And I think I'm going to take my embossing tape, which I just got this at um, Joann. You can get it at any craft store. And then I have an embosser. This one's actually made by the Smash Company. It's one of, like, two things that I have that are made by them. And um, you can use this, or they have them. Other companies make them as well. You just turn the style and click it, and it embosses it. So <clears throat> um, let me clip this off. And we'll get to embossing this. Okay, so I typed out spring has sprung. And what's really cool about the ones that you get, the tape that you get at the back of the, or at the store, the back of them is just peel off. So they're already adhesive. You don't have to worry about gluing these down or making sure that they stick. Which on a textured background um, is sometimes kind of hit or miss because you're worried about things sticking and staying on there for a long time. With these, I usually don't have an issue. Um, I am going to most likely seal these down, but um, we'll see how well they take first. Spring has sprung. <clears throat> okay. So since these don't have any dry time because they're stickers, I'm going to go back in with my Black India ink, provided I can find it, this one, and um, just kind of maybe accent a little bit of these, um, these shapes in here. And I think of flowers when I think of spring, so maybe we should draw some. That's what I'm thinking. And let's make it kind of go this way. That's cute. And let's do another one over here. And I'm just drawing these with my eyedropper of my India ink because it doesn't need to be perfect. And I like the way that it looks when the eyedropper kind of scrapes around the textured background. So, I'm going to do another one of these here, right up against these letters. You can see how this petal looks a lot different than these ones, because this is not on a textured background. The rest of these have it. So you can tell what a difference that makes when you have the background looking the way that it does. Okay. I'm going to let this dry and then take some final pictures and we're good to go.
if you guys liked this, um, make sure you check out the blog. It's thesmashbook.com. And there's plenty more prompts and e-courses and fun pages and all that good stuff. Um, I will see you guys over there. If you have questions, leave a comment here. Or you can head over to the blog or you can tweet me. I'm at Smashbook. And um, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks for watching, guys.